my name is Philip Thornton. Um, I co-lead component B of the program for Climate Smart Livestock. And this is mostly to do around um, adaptation in livestock systems and select in the selected countries. Also with the links with, um, with policy processes, at, mostly at national level in the three countries, Ethiopia, Uganda and Kenya. And this is one of the few, maybe one of the first um, research programs that Hillary has been involved with that's actually looking at um, livestock adaptation. There's a heavy preponderance of work done on crops and cropping systems, but given that we all know the importance of livestock in smallholder systems throughout sub-Saharan Africa, this always seems like, a, in some ways, it's a strange omission not to consider the livestock and the role that they play within, even within interactions with cropping systems. And so I think this program, this project, will go a long way to if you like, being a pilot uh, for, for showing us how we can help to identify interventions that will help poor people who have livestock as part of their livelihood strategy, um, but also how we can link their needs at the, at the local level with um, higher level policy work at the, at the national level. Again, given the recent um, or relatively recent uh, signing of the Paris Agreement in 2015, um, many countries now have commitments under the Paris Agreement for adaptation and mitigation targets. The focus over the last, even the last 20 years, has very much been on mitigation. This is now a, an opportunity to get adaptation really onto the table. And one thing that the programme should be able to help is to help national governments prioritise what they should be, um, if you like, what interventions will provide the best bang for the buck, if you like. So what are the most effective ways of um, helping smallholders um, become more productive in the future, while also um, minimising uh, the environmental footprint of livestock and landscapes. It's an exciting project because of this, it's new, it's novel, um, and as a result, I think there are a lot of people are very interested in the project, and so there's a lot riding on um, on how we do, and so I see this is a this is a very important step forward because it's really, if you like, opening up the agenda um, to bring livestock fully or more fully into the into the whole adaptation discourse, and that's really important. We're going to start off with some. Um, some futuring meetings in each of the three countries at the, at, the, the, at the research sites. And these are really where we get local people to tell us um, you know, what, what are their aspirations for the future? How do they see their livelihoods, their locality, their farming system? How do they see these changing in the future? Because we all know climate change is a big, it's a big driver of, of many things. But there are many other drivers too around population growth, increased urbanisation, so people often tending to leave the rural areas to go to the city. Um, and this has all kinds of implications for smallholders. Threats for sure, but also many opportunities. And so trying to get all of us thinking a little outside the box, now what are the sorts of futures that we'd like to see in some of these rural areas? And then from that, um, we'll be doing an analytic work that can then help us to really identify for these particular communities what are some of the things that could really help around adaptation. And then at the same time, in fact a little later in the process, we'll be working at the national government level and we'll feed back some of this information about what local people are, what are they feeling about the future, are they feeling optimistic or pessimistic or what are the, some of the things that program can put in place that can perhaps start to move some of these communities more towards where they'd like to see themselves being. And so I think for me that's, a, that's an exciting thing, doing this linkage, because too often policy is, it comes from the top down and it's sort of imposed on, on local communities, but actually giving local communities a say in what they think should be happening, that's exciting. Mm -hmm.